Lord, we lift up ourselves, our souls, our bodies to be open to your word, to be open to your loving presence and your grace. We ask this always in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a, a poem titled Choices by Alan Stubble. We all have a choice to live a lie or be ourselves, to laugh and cry or to follow someone else, to look up and smile or bow down and frown, to walk the whole mile or take off our crown. We have a choice to shout out loud or chant a whisper, to fly through the clouds or to be blown like paper, to conquer our fear or hide in the shadow, to the wise words here or to be thrown out the window. We all have a choice to climb our highest mountain or fall into our deepest hole, to drink from life's fountain or live life like a troubled soul. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken from her. Today's readings have a theme about making choices. But I don't really want to talk about that. I want to talk about camp. How many people, how many people went to camp as a, as a kid? Yeah, oh cool, cool, yeah. It's big fun. It's, uh, you know, you just, it just takes you out of your normal element. And I, I, I wondered, what, what is it about camp that makes us, well, do some of the crazy stuff? I'm not going to make them do it. I thought about it. Whenever you lose something at camp, and then the counselors find it, you have to, all right, you want to show them? You have to come up and do the squirrel dance. So Presley and, and Jenny, who are very good at it by now, they did it almost every day as they're losers. Uh, that is, they lose things. They love it because I never had to do it. I never lost anything, which is amazing in and of itself. Um, you know, we, we, talked, um, we talked to them about creation and how when God created, he saw it was good. In fact, he saw it was very good. And so we, we just read through Genesis first chapter, and we would have crafts that went with it. Um, at the end of the day, we'd come back for a shorter time and, and kind of just rehash it a little bit, talk about things. And we talked about, did you see, what did you see in creation today, that first day? And for the outdoor activity, they did, they did archery. And um, they were, what did you create today? And they talked about the crafts. One of the staff counselors said, well, the archery, you know, creates moral fiber in you. And it's like, wow, that's true. Um, does anybody know what moral fiber is? And one of the kids, you know, they raised their hands. They're uh, third grade to fifth grade. They raised their hands so fast before you even finish your question. I don't, at least why don't we picked, I think. So he's like, so what, what is it? And he said, well, fiber, that's that stuff you need to go to the bathroom on time. <laughs> so that was one of my favorite answers. <laughs> the, they, they did um, outdoor activities. Um, they did uh, this stuff, they called it the low ropes, where you, like we had to swing across an imaginary ravine, but we had to land on a little three foot by three foot block, and there was eight people or nine people in the group. And so how does nine people fit? And you're like, so you have to work as a team, and you're trying to teach each other how to do that and work together, and that was, it was challenging, but it was fun. One of the days, you have like a, it's like a tight rope, about a foot off the ground, but it's wobbly. You have a rope from the tree. If you hold it right, it gives you balance, you know, and you can walk. But you have all the rest of the, your team there holding up like this so that if you fall, they, they, they can catch you so you don't really fall. And though some fell, but they didn't fall hard because you could let them down soft. And that, that was a good image of the church. I was really proud of both Presley and Jenny. Jenny had a technique, I think. I'll just go so fast, I won't have time to fall. And she got on that thing and went, and she was across. Presley got up there and she was working it. I never saw such determination. She's like, I'm not going to fall. And she just won, one step at a time. She even got halfway and had to rest for a minute while we just waited. So it was, it was neat to see them work those things out and to, to make that happen. We taught them about Noah's Ark, because kids love to act out animal things, and that's always fun, and you can be silly. But they, uh, 
The point of the story is that God gives us a second chance. It's not so much that he flooded the whole world as much as he gave humanity a new beginning. And that new beginning continues as he gave us the spirit in Jesus. And we read from Ezekiel that I will take away your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. The kids, when they first got there, got a big piece of paper and laid down on it and drew a picture, you know, an outline of them. And throughout the week, they could take it out and color on it and add things to it. And so they, they took uh, that drawing and near their heart, they wrote things that were like stones in their life that they'd like to get rid of and things that were like a fleshy heart they would like to add. And so it was neat for them to do that and see that and build those up. So, really beautiful time. And we, we talked about the church and how God gives the world a second chance, a new chance in the church. That God on Pentecost poured out his spirit on all of us. In fact, on all of creation, all those that want his spirit. It was always nice to see when a camper chooses to fully enter into the activities and get the most out of it. The first camper that has to do the squirrel dance is pretty reluctant, but by the end they're almost volunteering to do it because it's... And they're singing funny things and doing different stuff. And so it's neat to see them come out of their shell to stop holding back. And segueing back to choices as we read in our readings today, that so much of our lives is determined by the choices we make. We, we, we're we're a, a bag of a thousand choices, mischoices, and opportunities. And I'll, I'll be the first to say choices aren't always easy. Um, I either make too many or not enough, and they don't go together, or trying to decide what's right. It's not always clear. So I want to go to our first reading from Amos. And if you know anything about the prophet Amos, he might have been a nice guy, but he didn't have much of a nice message. It was almost always a scathing reproach to Israel. And what he is saying this morning, and when he said, You're going to make the, we're going to make the ephod light and the shekel heavy, the image is that of scales, where if you're buying an ephod of wheat, but we'll cheat it, so it looks like you get, you know, you pay more for less, and we'll make the value of it high. Kind of like, you know, you ever get those boxes of cereal, you know, and you open it up and it's half empty? I mean, it says in, in tiny print, sold by weight, not by volume. But you still feel like you cheated, right? I mean, you got this giant box, it's like, wow. They were cheating one another, and if you want to be on God's bad side, just practice deceit. I think few things get under God's skin more than anything else than practicing deceit. In our professional business lives, in our family lives, in our relations in the church. Because I think what happens most often as we cheat in money matters is the ones that get hurt the most are the poor. Those that don't maybe have the resources to know better. I see this in Uganda where we work. There's people with a lot of money and everything they need but millions that have just enough for each day and millions more that don't have that. And so in our decisions, God calls us to make moral and ethical decisions all the time. Every day, every minute of every day, we're called to weigh that. And again, they, they can be tough. These decisions and choices can be difficult. But he wants us, I believe God wants us to make decisions and make choices that consider the whole, that consider all of God's people. Now, that includes ourselves, especially when we make money choices. I think we make choices that help us because we're part of that equation. And that's part of being human. And it's also just good sense. But he also wants us to say, isn't it more than just about you? How is your choice, your financial choices, your money choices, your ethical, moral choices, how are they affecting the most, more people, the, the good, the common good, and lifting up your brothers and sisters, not just in Christ, but our brothers and sisters in our community. So that's a choice we, we're called to make. And I think a lot, most of us, I would assume, have made a foundational choice to do the right thing. But I think we're 
you can see, like in Amos, that it's very easy to slip into, well, it's just the government, I'll cheat them, it's just this, or they can pay for that, you know, these little... And so to be above that, I think God is calling us to make that choice. The other choice I saw was with Mary and Martha. You know, the classic interpretation is, of course, that uh, Martha is busy serving and Mary is busy praying. And that, that's a false dichotomy. That's not really what they want us to see. I think they want us to choose first and foremost, like Doug said, to love God, to follow in the way of Jesus. Uh, when I went to camp, what I had in my mind was working with the kids, um, teaching them spiritual things and teaching them to pray. And I, and I got to do a lot of that. I didn't, but I didn't envision uh, making beds or fixing things or working in the kitchen. But all that has to get done. And so I did spend a fair amount of time sweeping the floors, cleaning up, asking them to put things away, putting them away when they didn't finish. But it isn't a choice between doing things and meditating or praying. It's a choice between, before I do anything, I ask myself, am I following Jesus in my life, in what am I doing? And it's my everyday doing, because that's what Martha was doing. She was just being a good host. She was just doing what you're supposed to do. And I think when we do those things, we want to do them in the love of Jesus, in to choose him first in our things that we do, our everyday things. The final choice I, I believe I saw was in Paul's letter to the Colossians. Paul is amping it up like he so often does and making us, he wants us to make a choice of faith, a choice for the future. He's asking us to see Jesus in his fullness. I, I love the Gospels because we see Jesus as a person, as a human, and some of the stories are really warm, they're touching, and we can relate, and they draw us in. But Paul has caught this glimpse of what happens when the Son of God chooses to lay down his life for all of humanity and to break the power of death in the world. And Paul is calling us to see that because he, the mystery that is revealed in Christ is Christ in you, is what he says in this morning's reading. So both in our, each heart's our own lives, but also in us as the body, that Christ is present here in us, and that's the mystery of God. I, I love that verse when I first read it, and, you know, the mystery revealed of Christ in you. But what kind of went on in my cartoon brain, this is what happens when you watch too many Saturday cartoons as a kid, I imagined Christ in me and kind of give me superpowers, being able to fly and jump over tall buildings in a single bound. But as I read and studied, and I learned that the mystery of it is that God is present in us, the church, in his people. It's like, wow, it was a little disappointing to me. <laughs> I thought it'd be more exciting than that, but as things happen and they unfold and you begin to see it, watching God work in me and in all of us together is an amazing mystery. As people struggle to get along. I mean, we've seen enough of it in the news and it goes from one terror event to another. And uh, one event of hatred and getting even to another. And we just, at some point, either want it to stop. We want it to stop so bad that we're ready to pick up arms and we're like, oh, that's not gonna work. That's what they're doing. But we, we make this choice and we enter into this and we see this is God's plan of salvation. And we choose to be here. The church is an organization unlike any other. We're, we're all over the map. We're white and black. We're Hispanic. We're Native American. We're red. We're blue. We're Yankees. We're Southerners. We're, we're all over the place. We're all over the world. As you travel, Christians are everywhere. The church is everywhere. But what we have in common isn't um, our skills or talents or the, what we do. Our connection is 
the choice that God made to die on the cross and then to rise again and to form a new life here. And we're here by God's calling, his choice, and our choice. So I leave you with the idea of the, the choices that we make that draw us in both to God and a relationship with Jesus and also into a relationship with one another that we choose to open our hearts to one another, our hands to one another, our doors to the wider community, that this choice is indeed the mystery that God has revealed in Christ, of Christ in us. Amen. Amen.